Hello my beautiful angels, welcome back to my channel. I'm Isabel Palacios, if you're new here. And today, I wanted to do a Q&A. So I asked you guys on Instagram, where I usually get all my questions for Q&As, what questions you have for me. So this is gonna be a random Q&A, whatever you guys wanted to ask me. I'm not gonna read people's names because I like to respect privacy. Some of these are a little personal, so. The first question is how to become a truly confident woman. So this is actually something I can make a whole video on, but I always say start from within. Confidence, you can wear the best makeup, the best clothes, the best jewelry, the best everything, but if you don't actually feel it within, it's going to be very fleeting and not true confidence. True confidence is something that has to be cultivated from within. So it starts from getting to know yourself, knowing who you are, knowing what you're good at, what you're not good at. So self-awareness, knowing I'm not gonna be good at certain things, but I'm good at other things, or I'm not going to be talented like these other people, but I'm gonna be talented in my own way. It's knowing those kind of things, but it's also being your own biggest supporter that no matter what you're going through, that you will know that you're good because you've got you, right? So a big, big thing about confidence is trust. I always say confidence is basically your trust within yourself, your trust that you have for yourself. So it's like, you know, we have confidence in other people because we're like, okay, I know this person is going to help me in this way. Or I know this person is their expert in their field. So they're going to be able to help me this and this and that. So we have confidence and we easily put confidence in other people just like we put confidence in a pilot when we get on a plane to get us safely to our destination right so it's about trust so the way we begin to trust ourselves is to set out to do things and to take action and prove to ourselves that we are able to get things done or to accomplish certain things so setting goals and accomplishing those goals are going to be so, so important and so powerful when it comes to confidence. Secondly, you have to be super, super, super loving towards yourself. Your inner dialogue has to be very loving. Your self image has to be very loving. Even on those days where you don't feel so great, confident people, it's not that all the time they feel good or all the time they feel flawless, but confidence is okay today i don't feel good but i'm still gonna get up and i'm going to do the things that i need to do or showing up at least versus staying in bed and hiding away being a cheerleader being positive towards yourself being loving towards yourself all those things will get you on the road to confidence and confidence i believe is something that is a choice it's a way of life it's a lifestyle you choose to be confident you choose to look at yourself a certain way and if your inner dialogue isn't good or you have traumas or things that keep you from having a positive self-esteem then definitely going through either some kind of therapy or life coaching or something to help you change your perspective about yourself is going to be so beautiful. So it definitely is all from within. I mean, the outside is just like the icing on a cake, which really important is the inside because you can have the most beautiful icing, but if the inside sucks, you're not going to enjoy that cake. Next question is, how are you? Would love to hear a life catch up. Well, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. I am living my mom life, doing things day by day, taking things day by day, really. And mentally, I've been doing great. I, you know, struggled a little bit in the early postpartum days, but now my daughter is 15 months old, so a year and three months. And I feel just more energized. I've been taking more care of my body, of my diet, and just making sure that I'm showing up for myself and I am making my needs known and especially my relationship and working as a team in my relationship has really been the most important thing so far. So life has been going good. Obviously, we all have things that we go through in life and I'm no stranger to difficulty or I'm not exempt from that and I have my own things going on behind the scenes, but I'm healthy, I'm well, I am happy, I have my family just had my three nephews i had my my brother and my sister-in-law just had twins and my sister just had her baby boy so we have three more boys added to the family so a really joyous time and a lot of changes coming in this spring so i'm very happy i couldn't 
be more grateful for everything. What advice do you have for someone that's 28 lost and trying to find their purpose? So 28 is a beautiful age because it's the age where you have officially graduated from like your early 20s. So I like to talk about, you know, how we have revolutions every seven years in our life. So when we're seven and then when we turn 14, it's another revolution. And then when we turn 21, we become, you know, we come out of that young adult stage and we enter the beautiful stage of you know, young adulthood. And then 28 is kind of like you are becoming an adult. And I think it's so beautiful this the 28th stage and I remember when I was 27 I felt a huge evolution part of that evolution for me was transitioning into motherhood but for you it can be something completely different I think it's important to look at these times in our life and really set a set the intention that our life is going to go towards one direction so for me when I was 26 27 I set that intention that I would enter into my divine feminine age, into my era of putting my femininity first and nurturing my femininity and seeing where that would take me. For you, you can say, I'm going to set the intention of my 28th year or my 29th year, whatever year it is, and I'm going to set this as my intention and literally plant the seeds in the direction you wish to go in. I always say, if nothing is for sure, anything is possible. So if your path or your purpose or whatever it is hasn't been defined for you in whatever way or whatever reason, it simply means that you are free to set that path yourself. You are free to create that path for yourself. And don't underestimate your power to set the path for yourself. It's beautiful. It's a great time. Don't ever let age be a limitation or a deciding factor. Anything is possible in this beautiful life. And you can take your life in any direction. So I would say start simply. Start from your daily life. What do you want your daily life to look like? And start implementing those habits and those routines right now as your life is to start planting the seeds for wish, where you wish to be. Any advice to make a uni dropout feel better? University is one of those things that it depends on what you're studying to make you successful, right? Some people study a lot of different things and they graduate and they find that they either have to keep going to school and get more degrees or they have to completely look in a different direction with the path they chose, right? It's important that you don't see university or the lack of a university degree as a deciding factor in your career. <laughs> I mean, myself, for example, what I studied has nothing to do with what I'm doing now. And university had its good things and its bad things. I mean, I met amazing people in college and I learned a lot about myself in those college years. But as far as the actual degree, didn't really make much of a difference in my life or my career. There's a lot of people out there who are successful, don't have college degrees. You can literally Google all the successful people who did graduate college and you will find a list a mile long because so many people forego it. And what's important is that you actually use your talents and your abilities and the things that you enjoy to create a career for yourself and know that a university degree or lack thereof does not make your worth or value as a human being go up or down. It shows, yeah, I, I worked hard and I got my degree and I you know, have all these accolades, but it doesn't make you any better or any less of a human being. Any tips on how not to go crazy as a stay-at-home mom? <laughs> if you need help, ask for help. And I know that this is a lot harder than it sounds for a lot of women to ask for help or to kind of, you know, say, hey, you know, either to your partner or to somebody, a family member, hey, can you help me out a little bit? But really asking for help, even if it doesn't go the way you want it to, brings you a step further into, okay, I am going to prioritize myself and my well being. My happiness is just as important, if not more important, than that of my child. And I don't say that in a way to be like, okay, my children don't matter. No way. But as a mother, we cannot pour it from an empty cup. We have to understand that we are like the thermostat 
of the home. So we set the temperature of the home. And if mom is stressed out and unhappy, the kids are going to feel it. So don't ever feel bad about taking time for yourself or taking a break or saying, honey, let's go for a movie night, call a babysitter, if that is possible for you. Also planning things that are fun for you and the kids. So for me with Evie, I enjoy going to the park with her because the weather here has been cold. Luckily it's now warming up and I feel like we were indoors a lot. So just going out, having a little outing at the park helps a lot and I love seeing her happy. So make sure that you actually aim to have some outdoor time or whatever the weather permits in your area to have some fun and have some play time. Another thing that's really helpful is waking up a little bit earlier if you're not already from your children, you probably are, <laughs> but you know, using those morning hours to do a morning routine like journaling gratitude so you have time for like quiet time i know how important quiet time is for a stay-at-home mom but having that quiet time where you are just dedicated to yourself before you get onto your to-do list one thing that's helped me from the very beginning when i was still trying to balance out all this stuff and self-care and all this was well i still do this i still Every night I have an Epsom salt bath. Not only is it really good for magnesium, magnesium is so important for calm and relaxation, but it also gives me my decompressing time because I love water, I love soaking in the bathtub, so I will be there sometimes late at night soaking for like an hour and it just makes me feel so much better. It relaxes my muscles if I'm tense from the day. Creating a ritual or routine for you that is for your self-care I think is so important and i know time i'm i'm somebody who struggles so much with time management and for having the time and not feeling like my my day is getting ahead of me so i know what it's like to not feel like you have time but when you actually make it a priority the game changes for you and you feel so much better i think that being a stay-at-home mom is in my opinion I know a lot of people won't agree, but I think it's one of the most beautiful things that we can do as women. You know, you walk a fine line between enjoying it to not enjoying it pretty quick. So definitely reach out for help, whether that's therapy, whether that's to your doctor, whether that's through friends, family, you know, your faith groups, whatever it may be. My partner, thankfully, he's very helpful when I say, I need you to, you know, help me with this and this and that, he will do it. I used to really beat myself up if the house was not clean or whatnot. And I then I was like, I don't have to clean. I'm not a maid, <laughs> you know, or I don't have to cook. I love cooking, but I don't have to cook. So I cut a lot of corners to just to make my life easier and to keep my sanity and keep myself enjoying the season. If you could go back in time and change anything, what would it be? I would probably change my reactions to certain things, especially whenever I was younger. I feel like I did a lot of impulsive things to deal with certain issues I was going through and I probably would have slowed things down and been a lot more intentional not rushing into things and thinking more. Not so much of a YOLO lifestyle like I did. But I mean, it all worked out how it had to work out. So, you know, we can live without regrets, but then sometimes we're like, I wish I would have done certain things differently. Not change the outcomes, but just change the way I went about it. But hindsight is 2020. So, all in all, I wouldn't really change much. What's your music taste? I love everything. I know everyone says that, but. Sometimes I feel like listening to 60s, sometimes 70s, sometimes 50s, sometimes, you know, new music or Lana Del Rey or Frank Ocean or Kanye West or, you know, I'm just all over the place. I love Spanish music, but I just feel like I've been listening to so much, you know, Latin music for like such a long time. I got bored of it. So now I'm like... I made a nostalgia feel good playlist last night because I was like, I need something else for when I drive. And so, yeah, I just, whatever I'm feeling that day is honestly my favorite, but I will always go to classical. Classical is something that I always listen to every single day. And I have a classical playlist. I have actually all my playlists on Spotify. Princess Palacios is my username if you guys want to go check that out. Will you be posting regularly again on YouTube? I want to and that is my goal. I know talked about this a few months ago, but I love YouTube so much. YouTube is something that takes a lot of effort. For a lot of people who are content creators, you know that YouTube takes a lot of time editing, recording, planning content. So I will always come back to YouTube even if I take breaks 
but I do plan on being more regular. I know I say that a lot and I feel bad saying that, but I love you guys so much. I love YouTube so much and I just need to figure out what works best for me and my schedule. <laughs> best tips for confidence. My boss wants me to work on it and it is quite embarrassing. So don't feel embarrassed. I think that if somebody wants you to work on confidence, it's because they see your potential and they see that you are good at something and they want you to see that for yourself and they want you to embody that for yourself. So. I talked about confidence a little bit earlier, but really it's about knowing that you have these qualities, knowing that you might not be good at other things, but you are great at these things and really letting those good qualities that you have or those talents showcase and allowing yourself to showcase them without fear, without making yourself smaller. And especially if it's like in a work environment or corporate environment, allow yourself to speak up, allow yourself to physically, you know, take up space and have fun with it, right? I think that especially with work, we we're obviously very serious in work, but have fun and learn what you're doing and learn your craft from the inside out so that when you have to do presentation or a sales pitch or have a meeting that you feel confident in what you know in your abilities. Did you experience any kind of adversity when you started your podcast? If yes, what kind? I wouldn't say adversity. My podcast has been pretty fun for me to do and pretty drama free. I would say that just the most difficult part of my podcast is dealing with you know, people don't like my content or what I talk about or trying to censor me certain topics that I have touched on on the podcast. And that's always sad because, you know, you want to do something good in the world and you want to bring out positivity or empower people or have tools to empower people. But when people don't see it as such or they see it as a threat or they see it as a problem, it's kind of hurts a little bit. But then I realize, okay, that's just my ego that's being hurt. There's people, not everyone's gonna like what you post and if I let people dim my light or tell me that I'm not doing good or I'm stupid or whatever it is, right? That that's only gonna hurt me. And so it's only gonna empower those who are trying to tear me down and hurt me. So that's basically the adversity I've dealt with. Whatever it is that you're doing, no matter what people are telling you, keep going because if you feel a call to do something and not everyone's gonna agree with it, that means that you are on the right path because I forgot who, what the quote is, but it's like, if you're not, if you don't have haters, you're doing something wrong <laughs> basically. So, you know, and I like, I like a little bit of constructive criticism, but you know, sometimes people can be threatened by just your presence or who you are and you can't let that hold you down. How can I get out of a trauma bond with my boyfriend? I know need to leave him, but struggling. The best thing to do is to end the relationship as soon as possible. At first it's gonna hurt. At first it's going to, you know, be difficult, but I always say it's better to heal while single than in a relationship. So if you feel like you're in a tra trauma bond, it means that the relationship is not healing. Relationships need to be healing and need to be safe space. So ending the relationship as soon as possible, taking time to be single, going through the grieving process of a breakup is going to help you so much. And then once you're past that grieving process, go into therapy, work on what the trauma is, what is causing the trauma bond, and focus on that versus the boyfriend. We're going to have many different relationships, take it from me, many different relationships throughout life. Some of them just aren't good for us. Some of us just aren't what we need to be focusing right now. And if you feel like your focus is to be healing, take that first step, have that conversation, do what you need to do to end it so that you can give yourself the time and the space to heal. Should men provide fully financially to be good men and is it even realistic? It is realistic. A lot of men do it Perhaps not in your experience, but it's because you haven't found the one that will. I know a lot of men that are providers and they enjoy being providers. My fiance is a provider and he enjoys it. He loves it. And it's never been a question of if he wants to be a provider or not. You know, it's just kind of like that's just the way he's built. So it is definitely realistic. I talk about the divine feminine in a spiritual sense, but I know... There's a lot of talk out there now about, you know, 50-50 or provider men and how to attract them. And it's all about your standards. If you want to be with a provider from the very beginning, make it known when you go on a date with somebody that that is what you wish 
to have because then you won't waste anyone's time. You won't waste your time. You won't waste their time. And it's just out on the table. Men actually make on average more than women, <laughs> especially if a woman wants to be a mom and wants to have time for maternity leave or even to be a stay at home mom. She has to have a man that isn't as masculine and she can depend on in that sense. And a lot of men are awakening to their divine masculine and realize, wait, I want my wife to be able to stay home and to, you know, take care of the kids or, you know, like in my, my situation, I stay home, but I also work on my own passions because I enjoy what I do and I love what I do. And so my fiance gives me the space to do that. So I think it's a beautiful thing and everyone's different. And some people are gonna be like, no, I like to, you know, pay for half. And I personally, that's not my, my lifestyle and that's not what I like. I think that we have to get rid of the stigma that, you know, women can be provided for. It's not some weird, sugar baby situation. <laughs> what do you think about Andrew Tate? I think he's an act, a shock jock, I guess is the term. And he puts things out there to rile people up because that's what brings attention and money these days is the controversial. So he's intentionally controversial. I've known about him for many years prior to him blowing up on the internet. And I was just like, oh, this is some like weird niche, super niche stuff content, but he blew up. There's like some things that I'm like, oh, well that, you know, that makes sense. But then he just like says something completely out there. And I'm like, no way, dude. I actually talked about him on a podcast with Emily Derrion on taking back your power. And we talked about Andrew Tate a little bit. If you want to go listen to that. <laughs> what is providing fully? Is it harder for men to be masculine in our current economy, i.e. providing? This is a few questions she asked. Is supporting a household as one person harder in this year versus 1900s? I mean, probably. I mean, things have gone up in price and people are really feeling it. But I think that if, if that's something that you really want, you know, you can have one income family, but it's about budgeting correctly and making sure that you your expenses are going where they need to be and you're prioritizing that because also if you have children child care is very expensive too so sometimes it's like the woman works and she's only working to pay child support if you want somebody who's a provider they have to be both generous and also able to do that for you because you don't want to be with somebody who's putting themselves in debt or making bad decisions or whatever it is with money and in control of the finances really. So it's really about what you're looking for and vetting people and, and knowing that there are people out there, men out there who do like to provide and it's nothing weird or something to be ashamed of. I, I get that question a lot like, oh, I feel bad. I'm like, why? <laughs> How did you manifest true love? <laughs> so for me, it was about being happy, single. It was living my life enjoying my life, enjoying the process of where I was and not being in a rush to find the one. I basically went deep into myself and loving myself and enjoying my own company. And when I got rid of the desperation and all that, that's when he came in and he showed up very randomly, in a very fun, spontaneous way. So it's not like a secret or like a special manifestation. It's literally, you. we are magnets and what we are, we attract, essentially. I have questions about weight. Do you feel insecure about your current weight? How can I accept my body slash weight? Somebody asked how to maintain a healthy weight. So I honestly, I went through, you know, postpartum, I gained a ton of weight pregnant and I am just now losing it. I'm breastfeeding, so I'm holding on to a lot of weight for breastfeeding because you have to have, you know, a little bit of fat or you know good breast milk so i'm just not putting any pressure on my body i feel just comfortable in it because i realize wait i there's a reason why my body's doing what it's doing there's a reason why i gained weight in pregnancy like my body my the female body is very cyclical so i honor what stage my body's in and i don't put any pressure on myself and i just eat as healthy as possible and you know, I'm starting a workout routine now and, you know, getting into that habit again. So I have to say I'm a person that I've never really dealt with like body dysmorphia or anything like that, thankfully. So I'm probably not the best person to ask, but I think it's about how you view your body, how you look at your body, how you talk to your body and how you eat. When I eat well, I feel better about myself and I feel better just energetically. And uh, I don't really worry too much about a little bit of weight because I know that, you know, once I start getting into a regime that I love and exercise that it's just going to come off and 
my body's gonna be at the weight that it needs to be. But right now I know it's at the weight that it needs to be because I am still breastfeeding my daughter and I'm probably not gonna stop breastfeeding until she's around two. But as far as feeling insecure, I mean, I see my body as just a vessel that gave life. I have some little stretch marks here and there and things like that. And you know, instead of letting it get to me, I just kind of, I don't pay it any attention to be honest. I just go about my day and you know, my, my fiance, he's very loving and very supportive and he's always complimenting me. And it's just, you know, I feel supported in all sense of the word. So make sure that if you feel insecure about your body, that the people that are around you or the things that you are listening to, or sorry, let me just make sure my, your influences aren't contributing to a poor self-esteem, especially when it comes to your body. How do I change my deep rooted shitty beliefs about men? And will they show up differently in my life then? Yeah, I would say, I mean, I've had my fair share of dealing with difficulties with men in my life. And the main thing and being able to go through that is self-love is that you should love yourself and respect yourself regardless of how somebody else treats you that's number one doesn't matter how someone else treats you or shows up in your life as long as you have that self-love and self-respect you instantly will create a kind of like a buffer zone from bad people and you're and when somebody shows up in your life and is disrespectful don't be afraid of shutting the door on that relationship so raise your standards, raise the standards, especially in how you treat yourself and how you view yourself. And you're going to see how that's going to only allow good people into your life. Are you still vegan? So I'm not 100% vegan. I do have some cheese here and there. I eat eggs almost every morning. And so that's something that changed while I was pregnant. I'm always, my body is always craving being vegan though. Like I eat a lot of fresh fruits, fresh veggies. I'm very much a vegetable and fruit girl. So just sometimes where I feel like I need it, especially different times of the month, I like my free range organic <laughs> eggs. But veganism, I'm always a supporter of and I'm always a proponent of. And that's just the lifestyle that right now is not super attainable for me but I'm heading in that direction. I am actually working on and I'm studying more about a alkaline vegan diet. So that's something that I want to adopt for me and for my family. Your thoughts on forgiving problematic friends and family. If you want them in your life, definitely have a conversation with them and set boundaries. I think that the most beautiful relationships that we can have, have boundaries. So we all have difficult friends and family, you know, sometimes in our life, but if they're not coming from a place of love and they're not willing to change behavior or say sorry or whatever to be in your life, then that just shows that they're not meant to be in your life. The top three tips for leaning into the divine feminine more. I'm a beginner. Number one is to prioritize your self care, your mental health. I mean, that goes for anyone, but I think for the divine feminine, it's like we need to slow things down and be more introspective. The divine feminine is very inward. So going within, asking yourself questions that need to be asked and facing those things that you have been afraid to face, that's very important. Number two is honoring your needs and your wants and not being afraid to ask for those things that you wish to have. And number three is going with the flow, not trying to force, 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 or compete, compete, compete. Go with the flow of your life and know that every single stage, every single part of your journey is very important to your overall life. So don't be afraid to slow down and enjoy that. Last question, will we see you and Lior collab on a video again? Miss you girls joining forces. I hope so, Lior, if you're watching this, let's collab. I mean, she's all the way in LA, I'm here in Texas, so kind of, you know, dealing with that. But Lior, I will come find you and we will record something together because I miss her too. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm almost out of space on my camera, but don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. I love you so much. And always remember this, my beautiful angels, no matter who you may be in this life, no matter what you may be going through or what you look like, always remember your true beauty, your true worth, and your true power always come from within. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.